right, Mr. Gray? Would you like to start? Uh, but before we do... You know it wasn't her fault, right? I just want to find out what happened. Okay. I'm here today at the home of Samuel Gray. One year ago today, he was at the Northern Radio Observatory, which was monitoring the broadcasts of the spacecraft creation during its final days. We're here to talk to him about those days. Mr. Gray, can we talk about Lauren's story and how you stood by her at the very end? All right. Let me tell you. Lauren Knight was known for flying the shuttle creation, but she lived a full life before that. At an early age, her mother died, so her father, a British biologist, he was a major influence. She always had a curiosity for birds in the sky from a young age. After college, she went to university where she double majored in physics and biology. Then her father passed away. So she joined the Air Force. She excelled and would go on to fly almost every kind of aircraft you could think of. But she was often alone. From what she told me of that part of her life, I think she was just trying to get away from the world. Then I met Lauren. Oh, sorry. Do you need a hand? Uh, yeah. If you could help me with the other half, that'd, that'd be great. Nice telescope, Carl. Oh. My name's Samuel. I, uh... I nicknamed my telescope Carl after the astronomer. What were you looking at? Sunspots. Solar filter. <laughs> I, are you visiting? Studying. Radar for the Air Force. Military? Explains why you're stronger than me. Do you study? Yeah, radio astronomy. We're looking at patterns in the cosmic background radiation, which is basically... The afterglow of the Big Bang. You know astronomy? A little. I have to go. Uh, okay. Sally. Is that your name? That's what I named the first plane I flew after the first female astronaut. And my name's Lauren. I think we were both surprised at how quickly we fell for each other. Jupiter will be up tonight. Is that your favorite? Nah. Mars is. What about you? Saturn. <laughs> Everyone likes Saturn. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Favorite Messier object. Andromeda? You? <laughs> Whatever. You just like the band. <laughs> What's wrong with that? So you and Lauren met before the HSC started? That's right. It was about a year later that they founded the ISA. Today, America and China announced their plan to join a consortium of countries, including Sweden, Germany, France, Russia, Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. They will form ISA, the world's first international space agency. The aim of the agency was to put a human on Mars by 2030. A lot of precursory steps were to be taken before their final goal, including asteroid and lunar landings. And New Zealand's main role was communications. That's right. We are proud to announce our partnership with New Zealand on the next space mission. 
This advanced facility will be responsible for the technical monitoring, but also astronaut communications. So what's the next mission you're planning? What is it? It's our most ambitious mission yet. ISA's next big mission is a flyby mission. The largest spacecraft ever built, named Creation, will carry the first payload to be dropped on the moon for the construction of Lunar Base 1. The question on everyone's mind is, who is going to go? Lauren got a phone call out of the blue, offering her the role, because, as it turned out, they wanted fresh young faces to represent their new era of space exploration. Hey. I thought I might find you out here. We finished going through our emergency fire procedures today. You don't have to go. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, Sam, in our species' lifetime. This is going to change our futures. Yes. But is it worth risking your life over? I think so. I had Eight, promised her start. I'd be on the pad Six, for the launch. Five, four, three, two, one. But I couldn't face it. Creation will shortly fire its ion thrusters to adjust its approach angle to the moon. Five, four, three, two, one. Thrusters fired. The angle looks good. Hold on. We, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. We've lost contact. It was on the first day of her flight that I too got a phone call. Supposed to give that information. Don't feed me that ISA bullshit, okay? I want to know what's happening with Lauren. There's been an explosion. But she's okay, Sam. She's all right. We're still trying to figure out what caused it. Can she get home? Can she get home? I don't know. I'm not allowed to listen in. No one is. Are you receiving a broadcast? Yes. We're relaying it to the States. Sam! Wait! You can't just listen in! Lauren! Sam? But who is that? Give me a minute, Sam. Now's not the time. We... Sam? Lauren, what happened? We're still not sure. The main engines aren't responding. Fuel line may have ruptured. That's when the slingshot plan was hatched. Creation should have fired its main engines to propel itself towards the Earth after orbiting the moon to drop its payload. Now they're going to use the momentum gained from the moon's gravitational pull to get the craft back to Earth. Now the trouble is the approach angle is wrong, so they have to use the weak onboard thrusters to quickly try and adjust the angle. Now to do this, they'll have to push the thrusters harder than they were ever designed to. But we have the utmost confidence in our engineers. What will happen if they are unable to create the approach in? The spacecraft will be flung off into space with no hope of returning home. Iron thruster fuel levels are okay to go. Engines responding to tank stirs. Power output is within boundaries. Okay. We're firing the thrusters now. Right now? Sam? Yes? I'm a little scared. You'll be okay. Lauren, it's time. Copy. Wish me luck, Sam. Good luck. Firing thrusters in five, four, three, two, one. Lauren! Yeah. 
Come on. Good night then. I'll wake you in the morning. You're my alarm clock, said the boy. Age is my alarm clock, said the old man. Why is it that old men wake so early? Is it to have one longer day? Can I help you? I'm here to finalize details for Miss Knight's televised announcement. What, you wanted to parade around on TV while she's in this situation? Dad, I asked if I could make the announcement. There's some things I'd like to say before I go. Now we're going to a live stream from the spacecraft, which is broadcasting to the world. Hello, everyone. My name is Lauren Knight. Due to an explosion on board creation, I won't be coming home. I thought about giving a report or a quotation to try and make sense of the situation, but instead I thought it a better use of my time to simply impart some advice that I found useful. Don't ever give up. I know the universe can be intimidating and the darkness frightening. Our home, the Earth is a very small stage in an infinite dark void. It's a curious irony that we should be so afraid of the dark. We've traveled a few miles up from any point on Earth and we're surrounded by it. But somewhere out there, there is something amazing waiting to be known. Someday we will marvel at the uncertainty of our beginnings. If we give up, however, if we no longer endeavor to find what's out there, then we risk everything. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere. wish for a purpose, if we hope for a brighter future, then let us venture to keep searching for it. Thank you for your time. And then she was gone. She died 12 hours after that broadcast. You said you wanted to hear about how I stood by her at the end, but the truth is, she was 400,000 kilometers away from home. She died a slow death. And she did it alone. So what happens now? Creation is still drifting through the solar system. The sun's pull keeps it in orbit. It'll pass close enough to the Earth to be seen through a telescope every 10 years. And every 10 years I'll be here watching the transit of creation at negative 270 degrees celsius lauren's body will never decay never age as i will she'll always be the way i remember her